Welcome back to more Reddit stories. Uh, these ones will absolutely make you cringe. We have uh, collected some good ones today, so buckle up. Uh, and our guests today are Amanda and Arasha. Hey, hey. Thanks for being hey, here. Hey. Yeah. You're um, so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it is our honor. Um, you've both been here before. Yeah. You know how it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I would say the general theme right now <laughs> for these is embarrassing. These are embarrassing stories. Now, most Reddit stories are embarrassing. These ones are really embarrassing. Oh, God. Okay. I get cringe. such bad secondhand embarrassment, too. So Me I'm too. Gonna be oh my God, I get so cringy. Okay. So here's our first story. Uh, this comes from a uh, subreddit called Today I Fucked Up. This is where people confess about how it's like, I just screwed up and I can't tell anyone I'm close to, so I'm going to tell the internet anonymously. <laughs> Great. Uh, so it's a bunch of just bummer stories. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, Today I fucked up by not looking before I sat down. <laughs> Floor eight of the place of my employment, inside the men's shitter. I'm sitting there, doing my sit down business because the boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. I've just finished the dirty work and I'm about to perform my ablutions, which is I suppose cleaning yourself, uh, but I delay it because it's a paid to shit thing, dicking around on Reddit a bit. At this point, I feel something jump onto my balls. Something I had never hoped I would ever experience, let alone talk about on the internet. I shriek, not a barbarian shriek, not a Viking shriek, psycho shower scene shriek. <laughs> a huntsman spider <gasps> has crawled out of the toilet bowl and jumped onto my low hanging fruit. This is an Australian for sure, like, I mean, it's, it's a huntsman, <laughs> but but the wording I, now makes sense. Um, I bat the spider off, smacking myself in the nuts, keeling over in pain, spider dead, good news. My banshee wail has not gone unanswered, bad news. Someone comes into the bathroom and knocks on the stall door. Mate, are you all right? Have you fallen over? I'll call an ambulance. No, fine, everything is good. Just slipped, fine, no need to call an ambulance, you can leave now. I flush the world's smallest sexual predator to try and retain some of my inner pride, wash my hands, and make the very, very long walk back to my desk. My manager's desk isn't too far from the bathrooms, and he comes up to me afterwards. What happened in there, is everyone all right? Yeah, everyone's fine. <laughs> and then I make the dumbest decision of my life and explain to him what had happened and the audacity of the man. He laughs. He laughs so hard, he has to sit down so he doesn't hurt himself. His hyena, kookaburra hybrid laughter has gotten the, the attention of some of the other members of my team. They're looking to get in on the funny, funny joke. Boss man wheezes, get it, get, get him to tell them holy shit. And because I'm incredibly susceptible to peer pressure, I tell them, like a Gimp. Uh, oh my god. Damn, okay. Uh, I'm gonna skip past most of the laughter because it went on for what felt like forever. I come back from lunch and Bossman and two other members of my team come up to me as I'm sitting back down at my desk getting ready to get back to work. Bossman is holding a piece of paper. Look, we need to have a chat about something. I've brought two of your friends in the team as support since this is obviously not something that's easy to talk about. I am confused. I have a blank HR report here. I'll need you to fill this out. You confided in me that you were sexually harassed in the workplace and it's my duty of care to make sure the poopetrator is brought to justice. <laughs> Under the space where it says, which hand did they assault you with? Just put times eight. <laughs> we understand this is a traumatic experience for you and I just want you to know that every resource we have is here for you. Um, I will just say based on every Australian I've ever met, this makes so much sense. What? Like Wait. this, 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 so, so he, a huntsman spider, which are massive. Wait, huntsman is it this big? Yes, huntsman spiders are the biggest spiders in the world. Huntsman spiders, average body size is one inch. Average leg span is three to five inches. So their body is an, an inch around. Uh, but overall, they are bigger than your hand. Like they are, or, you know, relatively. So this spider could have really fully grabbed the ball. Fully, Rope. fully clutched. <laughs> really. Fully clutched. It was like, yeah. Yay! Take me home. Um, I believe they are relatively harmless to people. Uh, relatively. Not to balls, though. Uh, like they're, you know, they're not venomous or massively. Like they're, they're not a dangerous spider. They're just 
friggin' huge. Here's what I'm confused about. The ending. Was that, like, serious? Or no, was they're, they're f***ing with him. With him. They're f***ing with him. Because they said, hey, with the hand, uh, what yeah, hand yeah, did they yeah. use? It's like, you eight, eight hands. Wow, they really, um, like, kept it going uh, for him, huh? I just can't get over the initial, like, claw grab that oh, it must have gotten. Yeah, on like, those. the boss and all them making fun of him, I think, is, like I said, Hilarious. based on the Australians I've known, it makes sense. At least an American point of view of Australia, it's like, that's what Australia, like, they're joshing there's spiders around. all over the place, and they're like, oh, this spider get ya? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got an HR report for you. You gotta sign it. <laughs> that's so true. Actually, yeah. when you say it like that, now I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. It's a funny joke. Why is it? But he you... shouldn't have told what happened in the bathroom, but I understand that. Oh, I would be oh, telling I everyone. Would. I would be telling a random person on I'd, the street. I would be telling people for the rest of my life that a huntsman spider clutched Grabbed my balls. My balls. <laughs> I just immediately go to visuals and I start imagining this man's balls and I don't want to be there. Well, that's, so. that's fair. So, uh, don't picture the balls. <laughs> that's all I can see. Um, I, I will say it is, a, it is an innate fear, uh, uh, speaking as a man, of like, of if, and I think this goes for anyone, of like, just a bug being in the, the toilet and like crawling I up. I like, stare at the toilet before I go Oh, there. I look. I can't imagine not looking. Oh yeah. And a huntsman spider's so big, you'd think. I told you. I told you that one time that I heard a woman. She sat on poop. <laughs> at a Whole Foods. I was on the East Coast, and I went in there, and she was with her son. And her, I don't know who did it, her son or the person before, but she went, "Oh my God, I sat on someone's poop." It was like a little log of poop must have been sitting there. Not she a little log. So mom and busy. She was probably just like. And get the pants off and sit, and it's just a. No, I, I absolutely. And I can hear the whole thing. I'm also the type that in a public bathroom, I will like check a stall to be like, is this the is this the stall I'm using? Oh yeah. And yeah. I will I'll go to a different stall. Oh no, I'm shopping in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm picky. Like if there's a drop. So now the title of it is not looking before I sat down, but. I should point out, he was sitting there for a while before this happened. I have a feeling maybe oh. it was underneath the toilet seat or something. <gasps> okay, well now that's a new fear that you can't just set up real estate I have, on the toilet. I have seen videos of people walking into a stall and lifting the toilet seat and spiders. Da, da, da. Don't I'm like sorry, that. I'm sorry, sorry to ruin everyone's life. That's how spiders work. I guess we um, can't freaking poop anymore. Uh, some comments. Uh, <laughs> Flushing the world's smallest sexual predator and the HR forum put this story over the top. Uh, someone said, such an Australian today I fucked up. Uh, someone said, thank you for renewing my mental subscription to be terrified of spider poopetrators every time you sit on a toilet. Uh, OP responded, mate, I've been needing to shit ever since I got home and I'm having nom flashbacks every time I look at my toilet. Oh my if I've God. Got, if I've got to live with this fear, so does everyone else. Um, Poopetrator is so dude, good. Um, I, I, I do wonder how often this happens in Australia. You know, it's such a like trope. Uh. It's such a trope here in America of like there's snakes and spiders everywhere. But I went to Australia for, for 10 days uh, several years ago and I was in Sydney, Melbourne, uh, Gold Coast. I never even, I don't think I saw a spider the entire time. Were you now, on a I was tour in, bus the whole I was time? In the, no, I, I was in the city, like staying in the hotel rooms and stuff. So maybe maybe I need to be out like more yeah. in the suburbs. Maybe they were clawed to your balls already. Maybe they were already on my balls. They I were on that Maybe they were just there every single day. They were know. with you. Yeah. You're like, come on, little buddy. Let's go to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hop on. <laughs> All right. Moving on. We have an am I the asshole. Am I the asshole for not warning my classmate that my friend is a lesbian and letting him be publicly humiliated? Okay. What? Uh, so, okay, here. It sounds like this takes place in high school since they're, they're very young. So, uh, I don't know how to start posts like this, so I'll just get into it. I, uh, a female 17, am in a class with my friend Hannah, also a female 17. Hannah is a lesbian. Zero interest or attraction to men at all. The other day, Hannah was homesick, and the guy who sits next to me, Mason, who's uh, 16, approached me about Hannah. We'd talked a little before, and we're kind of friends. He asked a bunch of weird questions. Nothing sexual, just questions about her hobbies and interests. Does she play sports? That's not weird. Is That's she in any clubs? Questions. Stuff like that. Uh, that's sweet. I, yeah, I, I can be interpreted. I, I, I don't know how he asked it, but uh, yeah. uh, I gave vague but honest answers. Then he asked if she was single, and that's when I caught on. I had a moment of mini panic. Hannah doesn't really try to hide her sexuality, but she isn't super open about it either. I didn't want to out her, 
but I didn't want her to have to deal with this rando. I ended up just telling him that he's definitely not her type. The bell rang, so we both went to our next classes, and I hoped to God that he took the hint. Spoiler alert, he didn't. <laughs> Today, while students were still milling around before class, he got down on one knee and asked her to go out to the movies this Saturday. On one knee? <laughs> Dang, shall The we? whole class was silent for a moment before she said, no, sorry, I'm not interested. Uh, he responded, but why? I'm a great guy, I swear. It'll be a good time, I promise. Oh my God. Yeah, dude, that's convincing. She responded, Mason, you know I'm a lesbian, right? The whole class bursts out in laughter and Mason sulks back to his seat. He started crying and sat down. That's when class started. After class, Mason came up to me and told me that I'm an asshole for not warning him that she was a lesbian. That if he'd known, he wouldn't have asked her out. Another kid, Mason's close friend I think, came up to us to back Mason up. At first, I was sure that I was in the right, but now I'm not so sure. Am I the asshole? Um, oh. You know, yeah. It, big debate for this one. This is a one. big high school story. Um, I don't think she's the asshole. She said she's not interested. If I talk to, a, if I put myself back, and this happened, this actually happened to me probably several times. You got down on one knee? Um, not, no. Uh, <laughs> to grab the spider that was I on remember, your balls? I remember in middle school, um, there was a girl that, at first a friend was like, oh, she's interested in you. You should, you should talk to her. And on the day that I was about to go talk to her, she came up to me and she goes, actually, yeah, she's not interested. And I was like, ah. Oh, Okay, and I'm just, but I'm like, what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna go if, if why like, as a guy, <laughs> I, I, just in, in general. But like, I'm already scared of rejection. If someone says your chances are not good, I'm like, then I'm definitely not. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. That's not very um, promising. And I, and she was in the right. She, that was a f fair thought to be like, I don't want to out her. I don't know. Um, I'm questioning. If she's even even if she is out, if she's comfortable with her just saying that to people, she's protecting. I feel like. Her only goal is to protect her friend. And in that sense, she protected her friend. She did warn Mason. You are not her type. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not her fault. You can't control people's actions. Yeah, I'm also gonna I'm also gonna back her up here because she also could not have known that he was going to do this big grand gesture. Uh, otherwise, obviously, she would have stopped him. Maybe if he had given like a hey, what do you think? I'm gonna try and like woo her. Yeah. Then she could have said something. But she did the right thing by being like. Back off a little, you're not her type. Like, yeah. And he, I guess, just took that as like, I have to try harder, which is but not it's, the message. It's tricky though, because it's like, it's just tricky. I feel like that's a debatable one. Although, I, if I were in her shoes, I would protect my friend at all costs. Totally. I, don't, I don't like what Mason did though, like with the whole why, because I'm a great guy. Like, it's like he needs more of an answer as to why she said no. You, you gotta take no. You, she had to like out herself now in front of the whole class because he was like, well, yeah, why exactly. are you saying no? She said no, it's a full I'm sentence. A, I'm a firm believer of like, if you, if, and it should, I feel like this is pretty standard, but like if someone's, if you ask someone out and they say no, you just gotta be like, all right, yeah. fine. Bye. There's no, there's no, pushing that. Like, I don't believe in yeah. that. I'm a yeah. firm believer in that. Um, I also, I just want to question really quick. Is he being laughed at because she's a lesbian or is he being laughed at because he got down on one knee? <laughs> I think that's a bigger factor here. I, As a high schooler, like, I just feel like everyone would be like, oh my God, he got down on one knee. Yeah. He got down on one knee to, to ask, ask her to, her to go to the movies. movies. I, yeah. yeah. And I also, I will also say, I, in the mindset of this, of course his friend comes up and backs him up. Because, like, he's, he, I feel How like. How did you do that to Mason? You just, you should, you, why'd you do that to him? Even though, yeah. even in his head, he's probably going, fuck, fuck Mason. Mason, what the fuck are you totally. doing? Totally, it's in both cases, friends are defending you gotta, you their gotta, own you friends. Gotta hold, you gotta hold true to your friends in that. That's yeah. right. But, um, so the comments are, uh, not the asshole. Her sexuality doesn't matter in this situation. His choice of time, place, and manner of asking her out matters. I guarantee that 99% of people would decline a date when requested like that. Uh, someone said, he started crying in the middle of a high school class, really? Uh, she responded, I guess he really liked her. Uh, never mind that they've never exchanged more than a few sentences and they once worked on a partner project together. I don't know, man. Oh God, uh, yeah. Not the asshole, you had no stake in this. Why did he start crying? I asked many girls out over the years that declined and said they weren't interested. It isn't really a big deal. And when she informed him why, he started crying? Her sexuality was none of his business, but Hannah was kind enough to give him a very good reason. Mason should have said, uh, no, I didn't know. Thanks for telling me. If Mason is your friend, help him work on his approach. 
maybe in the hall between classes, person to person, or maybe at lunch table. Standing or sitting, preferably. <laughs> uh, she responded, honestly, after this whole debacle, I don't think we're going to keep being friends. Um, Her and Mason? Yeah, I guess they were kind of low-key friends, but uh, yeah, he could have he could have handled this great. He could have been like, "Oh my God, I had no idea." Yes. Well, sorry, I, it's I think... not really a rejection. He had an opportunity to be like, "Oh, it's not me. She's just genuinely not interested in men." Like this yeah. is not even a case of like rejection because could, of who he is. If he had asked it casually too, if he's just like, "Hey, like, you're, I think you're really cool. You want to go to the movies?" and she's like, "Oh, I'm I'm not interested." He's like, "Oh, uh, oh, okay." Like, he should have stopped there. But if it came to being like, oh, I'm I'm a lesbian, if he was just like, oh, well, all right, well, I think you're sick. Like, if we want to be friends or something, I'm. He's just know, like, like, why? <laughs> why? I'm a lesbian. Why? But I'm a great guy. Why? Are you... why? But I'm a great guy. He's giving like nervous. Oh, it's because I'm a guy. He's giving <laughs> nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great guy. Yes, Mason. That's the, and then the part. The whole class. That's the part. It's not the great part. It's Clap. the guy part. The guy part. Get it. Even from the beginning, he was asking weird questions. Like Mason just seems like super nervous, and he needs to he needs to realize that he's he's doing fine. Also, just... like, yeah, the, the, pushing it is just not the answer, especially like high school, college, and and honestly, the world in, in large of just like there's so many people. Someone says no, it's like, all right, well. I'll go elsewhere. Yeah. I'll talk to other people. Like, <laughs> he goes to the teacher. It's okay. Hello. Will you go to the movies with me? I'm, I'm also a lesbian, Mason. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, if I could go back to high school, college age, I would definitely be less picky and just be like, if I feel some sort of interest in someone, I'm mm. going to like explore that. Exactly. And be like, I like, be like that. Hey, you want to hang out and like see where it goes? And if it's like, oh, I'm not feeling this, then move on. And like, yeah. you don't, it doesn't need to be like, oh my God. I need to feel this spark. It's but, like, it doesn't yeah. matter. That's what we're like when we're in high school. It is. Yeah. That's so true. It's a bleeding heart. Like, <gasps> I want to go away forever. That's what yeah. I was like. I was like that. I was like that, too. The gestures, yeah. too. Like, him wanting to get down on one knee and making it this big romantic thing. Just like you said, it would have been way more chill to just be like, hey, it's, movies? It's tough. And it's it seems... It seems so like, why would you do that? But also when you're 16, you have zero experience with like, like or probably with, in his case, he has not much experience dating and stuff. It's like, yeah. you're kind of going with, and you want to do something different and you want to be special and yeah. you think you got to do something different. It's like, yeah. you're going to learn where to pull back. And, but in kind of an endearing way. It totally. Is, he hopefully will grow up to do grand gestures where they are welcome. This is a fine story where Everyone's gonna, they'll remember this, but no one's gonna be holding this over yeah, him. Yeah, hopefully. If he can move on, yeah. if he allows himself to move on from it, he can move on from yeah, it. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. All right, next story. Today I fucked up by hooking up with the professor's daughter. I am a typical university student just trying to get through finals week. Tonight, after a very stressful day of exams and studying for my ancient literature class, I decided to casually scroll Tinder. It had been a while and I just needed to de-stress. De Little did I know, this would cause me more stress than I could have possibly imagined. I swiped right on a girl who was less than a mile away. She was 25, a little older than me, but she was super hot and she seemed into me, so I went with it. Uh, she invited me over to her apartment and she said that she had to go in 20 minutes, so make it fast. Needless to say, we got straight to business, but about three minutes after we began, we heard the front door open. She told me to stop, so I stopped and we listened. The footsteps came in our direction and I got pretty scared. I expected it would be like when my parents caught me a few years ago with my ex and it would be embarrassing all around. Not at all. The ancient literature professor who I absolutely despise and whose test I was frantically studying for walked into the room and froze. He saw her, gasped, and then saw my face. His face turned red and he screamed, get the fuck out of my house. I'm pretty sure I lost some of my hearing from how loud he yelled. Anyways, I put my shorts on and ran back to my quad. Now, as I lay in bed, all I can think of is how my, prof my college professor saw me naked. Not just naked, but raw-dogging his daughter without any clothes at all. He already didn't like me, and he is a very tough grader. So I already know that I am going to absolutely bomb this final and destroy my GPA. I see him tomorrow at 11 a.m. Wish me luck, and I'll update with what happens. Uh... Do we have an update? Uh, there might be an update. But um, uh, so first impressions, um, I don't know. My, my first thought is also just like, hey, you just met this person. Use protection. But Yeah, not raw dog. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. Not raw like, dog. Like, like, out of everything here, I'm like, come on, man. Like, but she was super hot. But she was super hot. Still. No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> don't. No, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. That's, that's, that's the one thing. Yeah. That, yeah I don't think he, uh, 
I would say besides that, am I wrong for being like, I don't know where else, you didn't actively choose I don't to think anything he, wrong. No, no, no. Did anything really wrong other than raw dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting he hot did raw dog is it. also He's, shitty. He is, he is fucked now. Yeah. Also, he is fucked. If After you heard, getting, yeah. If you heard the footsteps, wouldn't you immediately release the raw dog and well, put on so, your shorts? So, so, so hold on, I think that's- Unraw I, the dog. Wouldn't you unraw the dog? I think, uh, uh. I don't like that term. No, I think that's, that's kind of what happened. But about three minutes after we began, we heard the front door open. She told me to stop, so I stopped and we listened. Now, that's where it's like, I wouldn't just stop and listen. I'd be like- I'd be like- I'd be, I'd be fucking <laughs> Like Superman, just like- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then wow. like underneath the bed. Right, right. I'd I go just under the bed. I'd, I'd that's hide. That's what I mean. Well, under maybe maybe it could be like a roommate or something, right? Sure. That's I, that's also where my mind might Doesn't go. Doesn't she live with her father? Well, he didn't know that. He didn't oh, know, he that. know that. She was just 25, so I would just be like, oh, someone just any, came home. I don't think he had any info. So I, I understand if she's, I would probably go based on how she's feeling, but she yeah. kind of, she for her to She could have said like, get your clothes on. It's about my, my dad. Get your right, on. right. Unraw your dog. Unraw your dog. <laughs> they and get did out of unraw right the now. dog. They didn't um, unraw. So, so some comments here. Um, better question is, what is he doing walking in on his daughter, especially one that is twenty-five? Oh, the professor fucked up. That's actually kind of true. That's actually so true. Personal space. Um, I feel like this is grounds for either getting him recused from grading your paper or getting a remark from someone else. Um, uh, someone else said, invited to a college-age woman's apartment, but then the father casually opens the door and lets himself in. Yeah, BS. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It is yeah. strange. I, I, I do need to, there's so much that happens that I'm not, I haven't processed that. It is absolutely strange, she's 25, that he walks into a room and then commands um, the man to leave. She's, she's 25. 25. She's allowed to do whatever she wants. They're both adults. He doesn't get to dictate that. Yeah. This is weird. Also, it was weird. Yeah, like, I would have been pissed at my dad. Yeah, I would have been I, like, you get the f out, dad! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep going. I'm so, I, I, I was so putting myself in, I was putting myself in the guy's shoes and thinking about how I would feel in that situation to not decipher how weird this situation is. Yeah, it seems like just unfortunate thinking, circumstances on that part. Yeah. Are we thinking maybe it's not her father and that it's actually, like, she's dating him or, like, <gasps> like, Cause, Wait. Cause that would, the response of get the f out of my house makes more sense if it's like, oh, some guy sleeping with my Wait, he partner. doesn't know if it's the daughter? W well, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is like the way that the professor, that that's not the professor's daughter. This is what I'm saying. What if that's not the professor's daughter, that's the professor's girlfriend. That'd be hot. Or something. Because you walk in on someone and say, get the f out of my house is the response you'd have if your partner was cheating on you the with someone. plot thickens. Right, am I, am I yes, wrong? Yes, but also, that is also like a dad, a very a very dad thing. A weird. But also it's like, get out of your daughter's, or move out of your dad's house. Move out of your dad's house is but definitely also, ideal. But also, sometimes, you know, when you're out of, when you're in college, you're out of college, sometimes it's like, you gotta live with your parents, which is totally fine. Totally. Well, is that well, why living she was with like 20 is, minutes? This is, living like with your parents is fine. Privacy. But, but this dad is weird. Yeah. If yeah. He's, I almost hope that he's not the father because if he's the father, I think he's a weird dad. Who's the father? All right, let's see. Let's read this update. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, good. Yay. So, so, but most importantly, most of the comments think it's fake. They just think it's fake and not a real story. They think this guy's yeah. lying about well, all of this. Yes. Well, okay. he did add in raw dog. It's like that's true. You wish. That's true. He's like, he's like, he dude, raw dog. I was hooking up with this super hot raw dad. dog, and she let me for go raw. hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> update. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Update. Short update because I have taken the exam, but I still don't know what's going on. I'm going to st uh, start out all the personal info because this blew up a lot more than I wanted it to, and I'd rather not turn this into a school-wide scandal. I shuffled into class, praying that my life wasn't about to be ruined by this professor. Thankfully, the TA came into the room and said, due to a family emergency, Professor Blank will not be proctoring today's exam. He will email you back with your graded exam by the end of Saturday. Oh. Right after the TA said this, she started handing out the tests. When she came to me, she gave me this look and laughed before giving me the exam. I thought, great, now the administration probably knows. Anyways, I took the test and actually, I think I did pretty well. As soon as I got out of the room, I checked my email. It's a habit. And Professor Blank had emailed me. Below is the email without the names. OP, please meet my wife, myself, 
and the Dean of the Academic Affairs in room blank in the blank building tomorrow at 1 p.m. There we will discuss our situation and how to proceed. Thank you in advance for your understanding and cooperation. Best, Professor Blank. I don't know what to think. First of all, I didn't do anything wrong. No. I have no idea why his wife is getting involved, but there was verbal and written consent, and if oh. I need to, I can use the Tinder DM history to prove it. Also, his daughter has an IUD, so there's no way that this is going to turn into a pregnancy. That's the main thing I... The main thing I'm worried about is how this will affect my relationship with my professors and the administration. I guess I'll update again tomorrow after the meeting. Um, okay, his comments are, maybe he's doing the right thing and getting himself out of grading you. Wife there just not to not be left out of whatever their family is going through. Um, someone else commented, maybe you actually fucked his wife I was just and that's say. why the Dean of Academic Affairs is involved. I was just gonna say his that. Wife maybe that was his years? wife. Uh, maybe that was also a joke of affairs, but uh, I I think maybe the professor, I don't know. That's way too far. Like, if it's your daughter and she's 25, why would you get the dean involved? I'm, I still, I think it, it, it has to be his daughter and he's just being like this very protective father, which naturally I guess you would be as a parent. I think he's just pissed and he needs somebody to blame because it's like, how could I have walked in on my daughter just having sex with this guy? And it happens to be one of my students. So he's like reacting. But yes, the student did not do anything wrong. He never obviously knew that this was his professor's he kid. He didn't do anything. He just was going to, he was just hooking up with someone. Yeah. But is it the wife? So he, he put an edit after he read a bunch of comments. He was like, okay, after reading comments about it uh, possibly being his wife, his reaction in the meeting makes a lot of sense. And she never said anything about her and his relationship. However, I still very much hope that's not what happened, and I just terrified him at the thought of being his future son-in-law. Um, but there's another update. Thank God, I was like. Update two, I cuckolded my professor. <laughs> Raw. Dog. <laughs> Raw. Dog. Raw okay. dog. You guys wanted an update, so here it is. Over the last couple hours, I have gone from being terrified of possibly getting sued to possibly becoming a school legend. Unfortunately, a few of my friends found my Reddit post, and because of the class name and my professor being absent, they know exactly what happened. Anyways, here's the update. Right after making the last post, I got an email saying that the meeting had been changed. Everyone involved was supposed to meet a little later in a noise-proof room because they didn't want anyone else to hear or get involved. Anyways, we met at around 2.30, and the professor and the dean of academic affairs sat across from me. Like many of you predicted, his wife, the person who I now know was the daughter that I hooked up with, walked in with a, with a ring this time. Luckily, she and the professor didn't try to make any claims, like assault or malicious intent. Surprisingly, the meeting was pretty quiet and simple. Two other professors would evaluate the class exams instead of Professor Blank to ensure fairness. Under the student handbook, the professor, if they have an issue with a student, is required to submit all of my previous exams, class materials to the administration for evaluation. Probably obvious, but the scheduling office will put me into another professor's class next semester. I know that the meeting went as well as it could, but my situation is far from perfect because my friends found the posts and have told a large portion of our friend group. Damn casual Tinder hookups. Um, wow, so he... He slept with the professor's wife. First of all, the professor's wife was on Tinder. Wow. And fucking wanted to cheat. And like, didn't, didn't wear the ring, too. Still not really his fault. And what did she say? I have an IUD. How old was she? 25. Oh, like, sorry, I kind of misread something. She never said that was her father. He interpreted that as her father. Oh. Okay. He, that was all his interpretation. So going back, though, yeah, she should have damn been like, get your fucking clothes off, like, get the fucking, like, get the Yeah. They just sat and listened, just waited. Listen. Because she knew then what she was doing, so she clearly could have avoided that situation. You know what this also, I, I feel like. I'm if, so involved. Also, you, go to his place. Also, well. And he lives in the so, quads. Quads, yeah, she doesn't The quads wanna, are great. If, I, if you walk in to hook up with someone, they go, we have 20 minutes to make this quick. You fucking know what might be happening. <laughs> Why didn't she tell him to get his clothes on? I don't know. Well, him even being there still would be suspicious. It, 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 he had to have like stayed hidden. <laughs> yeah, if he got his, all his clothes on, she was just like, I don't know who this guy is. 
Yes. Your student is here to study yeah. with you. Hello, Professor. Yeah. I came by to. Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, didn't he assume like he was probably in their home? Weren't there photos of them? Whatever. I he was know. there okay. for one job and one job only. But I think it was very quick. It was probably late at night. Yeah, it was... they're just quick to the bedroom. Quick. Doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm would... guessing it's a professor that the professor is much older. So Aww. it seems it seems fair that he thought, oh, this 25 year old woman is his daughter, not his wife. But... Well, she's clearly not happy in that relationship. Or well, I think she, or she's like, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe he can't raw dog her. That's that's kind of what I'm She's looking for it. <laughs> she has an IUD. She's protected. She's in search for the raw. Okay, moving on from that wild one. Am I the asshole for leaving my husband at home while I spend the week at my brother's because of how he buys groceries? Buys groceries. Um, okay. What does he do? All right. What? <laughs> I've been in a committed relationship with my husband for 17 years, and overall things have been great. We've had a few rough patches, but what's important to note is that while he earns more than me and is considered the main provider, I have a substantial trust fund that ensures we're financially stable. I work part-time as a teacher while attending university, earning less than him, and most of my income goes towards tuition. Our household income exceeds 200 k annually, while the average in our area is below 50 k Damn. One ongoing issue we have is my husband's frugality. He likes to control my spending and have the final say on how he uses his earnings. It's worth mentioning that I've never used any of his income and have no intention to do so. Oh. Yeah. However, the main point of contention between us is his frequent visits to food banks. Despite having more than enough food at home, he insists on going to food banks to save money. He intentionally looks disheveled and uses our beat-up car to blend in, even though he's never experienced food scarcity. I've explained to him the need for food donations in our community, even showing him social media posts from local food banks. But he remains indifferent. I suggested he volunteer or donate to gain first-hand experience, but he refuses. The unfortunate part is that since we're never short on food, most of what he brings home ends up getting thrown away. Today I discovered our fridge filled with fresh produce and meat that clearly didn't come from our regular grocery store. When I confronted him, he admitted to going to a food bank after seeing a Facebook post about a donation of fresh food. People on social media were already asking if any was left, and there wasn't. I showed him these comments, but he brushed them off, claiming people should have gone earlier. Exhausted by the situation, I packed a bag and went to stay with my brother for the weekend, asking for space to think things over. My husband accuses me of overreacting, being vindictive, and threatens to go back to the food banks regardless of my feelings. His family is also messaging me, calling me an asshole for urging me to stop interfering with his choices. I turned off my phone, but now they're bombarding my brother with messages. Thankfully, he supports my decision and ignores them. All I want is to enjoy the rest of my week without being angry at my husband. Yes, I could let this go and not scold him, but the food he takes could have gone to people who truly need it. Mm -hmm. I'm not leaving my husband, but I need a few days away to gain some clarity. Am I wrong for wanting this space? Um, wow. No, that's the weirdest thing I've heard in my life. That's at a first, weird asshole. At first I was like, oh, he's just trying to save money. She needs to relax like so she doesn't need everything at the grocery store. And then it was like, oh no, he's taking donations from other people at the food bank. There are so many levels of weird that you could do of like, oh, he goes to Costco and just does samples to like, <laughs> Eat, sure. eat, eat food, it's like, all right, yeah, you can do that. Or like extreme coup couponing, or I don't know, there's a million ways to buy groceries in weird ways. Yeah. But that's not a weird way, that's a, that's a fucking asshole. That's a messed up super way. Super shitty way. Also, that's a, saving the fact that he also like dishevels himself and uses the beat up car, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. so fucked up. He can't, he can't play the, the card of like, oh, I thought, uh, I thought that was for everyone, which is bullshit. But and like, she has a trust fund, so, Technically, she has more money than him. Their their household income exceeds two hundred thousand dollars in an area uh, that is an average of below fifty k. So this isn't like they live in New York City. They are living somewhere where they have extreme excess funds, and like they are. This is so stupid. It's so twisted. Like they could live uh, much more like luxuriously even, but instead they're going the exact opposite. He's very frugal. But he's too, he he sounds too controlling, and I don't know. I know she's not gonna leave her husband, but that's kind of big. The, well, I think it also we gotta point out the fact that he gets so much that still they end up throwing some away. Oh, that's what 
that's, oh, that's the, awful. So frustrating and awful. That's yeah. terrible and, to and see. And his, his remark of like, well, they shouldn't get there earlier. It's like people who are uh, impoverished generally are working till late. Exactly. Don't have the opportunity yeah. to get and there. Maybe they can't have a car. Yeah, they have to walk yeah, there. Yeah, like they, the they're taking the bus. They're getting there. It's like, oh, yeah, some guy in a car who makes 200K just pulled up. No, that's really Dump manipulative. Dump his ass. I am, I know there's no way for food banks to, to check, like, but it's of just, course. it's so frustrating. Because, oh man. He's I like attacking, that. he's attacking the system that doesn't do background checks because obviously on a normal person, why would they do that? They're not also expecting this shit. Right. They'd be like, that guy, he makes 200K a year. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. He's trying to like outsmart a system that is just simply not made for him. Something also to be pointed out um, is that, you know, most food banks. Fresh food is rare at food banks. You know, it's a lot more like like canned goods, things that can last a lot longer. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so he took an opportunity to take something that <sighs> probably a lot of people really desperately Yeah, there were needed. comments. Yeah, um, that's that's heartbreaking. It's mind blowing. This guy needs therapy so bad to figure out what is going on in his What's brain. What's the insecurity of money? Like, do you think it's going to run I out? Mean, but I think it's also a this is a microcosm of like a lot of things of wealth hoarding, where it's like people have so much more money than they even use or would ever need, but yeah. they have this feeling of like I need more and more, and I yeah. need to save this. It's like, why? Like, yeah. What? The wife is like, we're good. He needs to go to therapy and figure out where that 100%. comes from. But the family is also justifying it. So this family clearly is does this. They have an issue with he money. He was probably raised like that too. Like uh, it's you need to save everything. Exactly. And I'll go away. The family was like, we have money, but we don't want to tap into it. So this is how you have to live. So uh, first comment: How did he grow up? We both grew up wealthy, but to him, he doesn't feel like he did because his parents worked. They're local business owners. And mine did not have traditional jobs as my mom was a stay-at-home mom and my dad focused mostly on doing charitable work. In my husband's mind, I grew up privileged and he had to work for everything he has, which is just objectively not true. Um, yeah, it's, it, it sounds like they're, they're both so wealthy when you, grow up, when you grow up in a certain situation, it's easy to think like, oh, I, no, I had to work hard. It's like, because you haven't met people who really had to work really hard. Really had like, to work hard. And you hard. don't understand and that. And didn't have and, something to fall back on. Yeah, because I grew up in a, in a upper middle class area and like, I just didn't have a concept of, of it, mm -hmm. of, of, of other classes, like other, other you know, um, income levels and stuff until you get out there and you see it and you meet people and, and, yeah. and you're like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I understand now. Yeah. And it's it takes that and I guess he just hasn't done that at all in his life. I don't know how to I can't defend this guy. Like no. I, I, I I'm trying to I always try to like be like, okay, maybe I understand where he's coming from. But nope. he is in fact going to the areas and he's also it's like I said, Acting it, goes, like it he, goes back to he dishevels himself and uses the beat up car. Yeah. He's this guy's a monster. The theme I, I, the theme there is privilege, and if you have it, you need to acknowledge and recognize that you have it, and he's doing the exact opposite yeah. by not claiming it. Dump yeah. his ass. I, I actually do think this is divorceable because that's some I psycho, do too. That's psycho uh, psycho behavior. Yeah. Um, someone else says, not the asshole. This is completely unhinged. A man making 200K while married to a woman with a trust fund going to a food bank is unacceptable. I couldn't live like that. And I also couldn't live with someone controlling how the money was spent. You are absolutely not Agreed. wrong to want space. I would want permanent space. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, based on her description, I think she's like mega wealthy. Like it's like, oh, my dad just mainly does charitable work. It's like, you guys are <laughs> dad's, My dad's name is Bruce Wayne. And yeah. it's like, no, I think, I think if he's married to yeah. her, I'd be like, we're good. We're good. I don't need to work. But it's not even that he's being like frugal. He's being extremely controlling. Yeah. And he's not like at all having a conversation about this. If she's leaving because you're going to food banks, dude. That's yeah. no, that's totally fair. If she says that to anyone, they'd be like, oh, yeah, get a divorce. Yeah. Um, yeah. Someone <laughs> says, uh, girl, why the fuck have you spent close to two <laughs> decades with someone who tries to control your spending and literally steals from people who can't afford groceries? I don't care that anyone can go to the food bank. If you're bringing home 200K a year and get your groceries from a food bank, you're stealing food from people who need the charity. Yes. Not the asshole, and please, oh my God, divorce him yesterday. Um, I love it, girl, divorce she's him also, yesterday. It's also important to point out, like, you know, she, she sounds like she's set for the rest of her life. She just needs to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, like, yeah, man. And she's doing a lot, it sounds like she's, She's an awesome person, like, you know, uh, part-time teacher and stuff. I feel like she could move on and meet someone way better. Yeah, 100%. Um, she would thrive without him. 
Yeah, I think. Girl, dump him yesterday. <laughs> last, last comment. As someone who has had to rely on food banks in the past, not the asshole. Holy shit, OP. Leave your husband. Maybe report him to the local food banks as someone who abuses them when his income clearly proves he doesn't need it. I, I, yeah, I, I, if that's something. Report. Do it. And then divorce. Yeah. Do it. Well, do that. Tell everyone what he does. Tell everyone. Yeah. Tell his friends. Tell, tell every person you possibly can yeah. that he does that. Yep. He's going to just change the system of how things are processed at the food bank too, which is just going to make everything more difficult for so the people unfair. who just need to walk in and get what they need. I feel like the stereotype is often, the stereotype that you hear on like news channels and stuff is like, oh, low income people are the ones abusing the system. And it's like, and here's a fucking wealthy ass dude abusing the system. Trying to pretend like, like he's low income. Yeah, it's some absolute bullshit. Yeah. That's, um, that's one of the worst guys yeah. I've ever, because that's just an insane. It's just insane. Just, There's zero justification for it. And he's being a dick about it. And he's getting yeah. his whole family to be dicks about it. Yeah. it. There's also always the element of even if what someone is doing in the story isn't an asshole move, how they treat their partner is still a factor. Right. And, and maybe they're doing some justified, but how they treat their partner makes them an asshole. And he yes. treats his partner like she's... Garbage. Garbage. And her own family too. Like her brother yeah. getting harassed by his family. It's all insane. known. Get no, away. No, no, Get no. away from that family. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on from that guy. Today I fucked up by donating fifteen thousand forty-one dollars to a poor community in Bangladesh instead of the hundred and fifty dollar donation I intended. Okay. Uh <laughs> This happened in February of last year, but my friends have been telling me I need to post this online. So here goes nothing. My wife and I, both 31 years old at the time, moved into a new three-unit apartment building in San Francisco. One of our neighbors is a 70-something-year-old oh. retired veteran. We'll call him Joe. For context, Joe is a white American guy, and he's also a devout Hindu priest. One day, I run into Joe in the hallway, and he tells me about this charity he manages for a community in Bangladesh. I wanted to support my neighbor and the charity, so I asked Joe to send me the GoFundMe link. The next day at work, I go on the GoFundMe page and donate $150, or so I thought. Moments later, I get a text on my phone warning me of an unusually large transaction on my credit card. I'm confused and swipe to open the text message. It says I have made a payment of $15,041 to GoFundMe. Immediately, I'm sweating. How could I have donated $15,000? I spend the next 10 to 15 minutes retracing my steps, and finally I realize my credit card starts with the numbers four and one. It seems I had accidentally started typing my credit card information while my cursor was still in the donation box. And just like 150 became 150.41. Yikes. I call GoFundMe support line in a panic, and when I finally connect with a human, I explain what happened. No need to worry, he tells me. They will initiate a refund of the transaction, which should process in three to seven business days. That's a huge relief. But then I ask the agent if the charity will be able to see the donation on the GoFundMe page until it is refunded. What do you mean? The agent asked me. What do you mean, what do I mean, was my response. <laughs> will they be able to see the $15,041 donation? Unfortunately, yes, the agent tells me. They will be able to see it until the refund process is complete. I tell him that's a big problem as the entire GoFundMe had hardly raised that much at that point. Surely they will notice their fundraiser doubling overnight. My plan was to knock on Joe's door the following morning to give him the full story so that he could pass it along to his contacts in Bangladesh. But when I woke up the next morning, I looked at my phone and saw I had 40 plus notifications on Facebook. Someone had sent me a friend request, had liked many of my old posts, and had sent me many messages. Immediately, I was concerned when I saw that the individual messaging me had a Hindu name, but I never could have imagined what I saw when I opened his first message. Mm. The man had sent me a video of himself from Bangladesh, surrounded by dozens. Hold on, oh this is God. so rough. Okay. <laughs> the man had sent me a video of himself from Bangladesh, surrounded by dozens of impoverished and hungry people holding bags of food, thanking me by name, Michael, for my generous donation. A big round of applause for Michael. At this point, I have leapt out of my bed and I'm pacing. Part of me wants to scream. Part of me wants to crack up laughing. I start swiping through the man's messages and it is picture after picture after picture of poor Bangladeshis thanking me for my kind donation. Literally hundreds of photos of frail, elderly, disabled, and malnourished individuals holding signs with my name. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I've uploaded a portion of the video and a few photos for you guys to see here. Uh, oh my God. Oh. 
Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because this is an insane oh. situation to be stuck in. Oh. Okay, so. Um, oh my God. Um, so he sees the direct impact that this makes. Um, needless to say, I couldn't live with myself just donating $150 after seeing how the community responded to $15,041. I decided the least I could do was to add a zero, and so I donated $1,500 once the original donation was refunded. The charity's host was incredibly gracious and understanding, and he explained to me that $1,500 goes very far in Bangladesh for urgent food relief. Here is the charity's new GoFundMe link if you want to check it out. Ultimately, I think the whole experience was a win-win. I helped a great cause, and I got a funny story out of it. Um, okay, so to recap, he got it refunded, but then he donated $1,500. Okay. But um, I, okay. I... No, uh, I, I feel like I would... I would have to find a way to get the 15,000 and just eat it. Just f eat it. Cuz I, I don't know. I, I don't uh, the problem is I don't know this guy's financial situation. No, right, right exactly. I mean, exactly. he's got 15,000 to deposit. He's got 15,000. No, that could have been like I mean, I get it, but like It could have been everything. If that was savings, everything, it's like yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't I think it. I would ask friends and family and just eat it. Uh, some comments here. Best post on here in ages. Thank you for the great story and for helping out those folks. $1,500 is still very generous. Man, this got me good. I hope you didn't get behind on bills or anything after this mix-up. Um, I will say, the fact that he his original intention was 150 bucks. Which is still a great donation. So he still times that by 10 and like, you know, yeah, it's yeah, still yeah, yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Um, someone said, holy shit, man, that put a pit in my stomach just reading. I can't imagine how you felt, LOL, shit happens. Glad your neighbor was understanding and good for you for going the extra mile. Watch this post blow up and a shit ton of Redditors donate. That would be awesome. Uh, yes. Someone else said, oh man, what a ride. I'd feel horrible. I hope Reddit comes through and helps. I'll throw in a few bucks and maybe others will too. Um, there's a GoFundMe link. We can see. Um, oh my God. I so so he, posted, I it's like he posted it to Reddit and this went viral. So, um, okay. <laughs> so uh, their goal, they're at 93K um, raised of 108K goal. So. Oh my god! That's awesome. Uh, wait, that's amazing. Not gonna cry. Not gonna cry. Oh, Seriously. What a wonderful, wonderful oh. thing that this like hilarious story. It actually has ended up being better that this all happened and he posted Shane, it. And then, what? Gonna cry. Stop. Stop. I'm not gonna cry. Stop! Stop! I'm not gonna stop! Cry. Stop! We're talking about assholes. I had to look away, like seeing the photo and everything. I'm like, so yeah. sweet. Yeah, the photos, and you know that they. We're not going to be upset if he was just like crazy story. I had to refund it. Yeah, they were the obviously. The fact that they were so like, cool, they're like, oh man. I love it's that all they good. all have a thing. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. It's uh, I, you know that sounds like a uh, a plot line for The Office. Like Michael Scott would accidentally <laughs> yeah, do that and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to bring it back without <laughs> yeah. while still being cool. Uh, so there's an update as of uh, literally a couple uh, weeks ago. Uh, Thanks for your kindness. Our ability to bring relief to others has multiplied many, many times. It is unbelievable. We have been struggling over the past several months, yet in the last 24 hours, over uh, 1,800 donations have been received at GoFundMe, the largest single day in our history. We're astounded at the support we have, been, we have seen, and this totally helps our effort. Kindly take a moment and share our campaign with friends, coworkers, and gentle souls. This will help us extend our reach to more people more often. As of right now, of reading this, it's it's not far off from their goal, but we'll post the link uh, down below and um, check it out. Yeah. Keep it going. That was super meaningful of that guy to think of putting the link in there as well. I know of just it really. This. It really turned out well, and he, you know, on Reddit, you don't know if something's gonna go viral or not. So basically, he, it's almost like he did eat, eat the money almost, but didn't have to. He, you yeah. Know what I mean? It all, it all. See what he should have thought of. Should have said all this. Posted, posted. This all goes viral. Tons of donations, and then he retracts it silently. You know, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, I got my fifteen hundred no. bag. Um, this is this is one of the coolest stories we've ever. Oh read. Oh my um, god. Yeah, we'll post the link. Story. We'll post the link. You can be part of it too. Um, Please. You know, um, cool story. so heartwarming. All right. Wow, that was the sweetest story we've ever read here. Um, mm -hmm. Genuinely made me tear up. So great. All right. Wow. Well, let's move on to uh, some insanity. Um, 
So this subreddit that we're about to read is wedding shaming. Um, Amanda, you know a little bit about weddings, right? <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, you want to get married, right? I got married. What? <laughs> Rasha, you know this. Oh, right. She's playing, oh, you guys. Right, 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 right. Yes, right, right. I got married. <laughs> so did Kimmy. Yeah, so did Kimmy. We uh, got married. To each other? And, and yep, Kimmy and I are married to each other. What? Finally, what the fans want. I didn't know this. And, uh, and your weddings went off great. Yes. Uh, there was no major issues, no cringe moments, nothing embarrassing, nothing massively embarrassing. My mom made a slideshow of me and baby pictures. That of sounds me great. Looking Awful in that's a lot no, of them. But that's I'm normal. Text that's your mom. normal. <laughs> Cindy, let me get those photos. Weddings, I feel like, always have something yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not like nothing, oh. nothing like cringy okay. or anything so like that. So let's let's uh, let's see how this feels. Woo. All right. Maid of honor keeps making jokes about a threesome with the couple publicly all wedding. <laughs> oh no 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 no. Um, no, no. Last night was a rehearsal dinner and they had some toasts and the maid of honor got really wasted and in her speech made two references like, you never know what the future could bring. Maybe we'll have a threesome. Laughs. Um, <laughs> it was almost funny the first time and she was wasted, so whatever. Second time she referenced a threesome in the same speech, you could see the mood in the room change to cringe and the bride and groom got really uncomfortable. Oh. Today is the wedding and she's already hinted at it again this time saying something about a thruple while people are trying to get ready. Like, oh. this is so fucking weird, right? It really reads as, ha ha, funny joke, unless. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. for some reason, she thinks this is her last shot. I sort of got the vibe she wanted the bride more than the groom and probably is half in love with her or something. But Christ, keep it to yourself on their wedding day. Nobody needs to hear how you want to fuck the couple, and it's just sad and extra cringe if she is just lusting after the bride and she sh could, shouldn't have agreed to be the maid of honor. I don't know her at all, but I hope one of their other friends says something. The ceremony hasn't even started yet, and we have a long day ahead of us. That is so funny. Did Everybody wants to f the bride and groom on their wedding day. Um, before the, the ceremony? I think it's before the She's ceremony. She's in the bathroom in her dress, just so being we, like, gotta write this. This is, this is like, as it's happening, like, um, some comments. Someone would be doing her a huge favor if they would just take her aside and tell her that her jokes are falling flat and giving everyone the cringes. Yes. Someone else says, why is no one speaking to this woman? There are how many people involved in the wedding? I'm talking about the bride, groom, bridal party, groomsmen, and everyone else. There has to be at least one person with the smarts to talk to this woman and let her know that her jokes aren't funny and are actually making the bride uncomfortable. Even if you don't know this person that well, she needs to be told to shut the fuck up about this thruple already. It's not funny, nor is it appropriate to add to her speech. Yeah. Maybe she shouldn't uh, be giving a speech at this point. The poor bride. Uh, the OP responds, I will say something to her or get the bride's sister to. I really am kind of an onlooker in this wedding and was only at the rehearsal dinner because I'm married to someone in the wedding, but don't know almost anyone. Today I'm playing gopher and running errands for them. It's deaf fucked up, and when the reception and after party festivities begin, I'm sure with everyone drinking again, it'll get worse. Um, someone said, one sexual joke, that was awkward, but they were just trying to be funny. Two sexual jokes, oh, this is what they think about when they're alone at night. Mm. Uh, OP respond, exactly. Like, okay, kind of cringe sexual joke from a drunk person. Weddings be like that sometimes. But two to three times the same joke, yeah. they are thirsting. Discomfort. Uh, so there is an update. They fucked. She's in love with the bride. I talked to the bride's sister first. I am a chicken and was afraid to go right to the maid of honor and had to psych myself up for even this. Basically, the maid of honor was roommates with the bride. Y'all called it and isn't happy she's being kicked out of the house. The bride owns, by the way. Now that they are getting married. The groom lived with them too for about a year and a half and all three were good friends before they ever got together. Everyone values their friendships and are trying to ignore it because it's been hard on her. Sister doesn't think it's an unrequited love. She thinks it's bitterness from losing her bestie to her other bestie. But I don't know, that sounds like infatuation to me at least. Bride's sister said she would confront maid of honor because yeah, it's she didn't think anyone else was picking up on it, but that's embarrassing AF. Ceremony hasn't happened yet. We shall see. No more updates. So, um... I just love that she's still in the bathroom just f***ing writing this Reddit story. Uh, she's like, like, what do y'all think? And hurry, because reception's starting. Ooh, um, that is so awkward, guys. That's really rough. I... 
that is a hard thing when when a third person gets involved and you are living with someone and you start dating that person and you all were friends it is really painful for the other person but also but also process it elsewhere and don't start announcing sexual jokes at their yeah. wedding and she probably made her a maid a maid of honor because she felt you know like okay i'll make you a maid of honor but honestly that bride needs to set a boundary yeah like girl yeah. i own this home yeah yeah I, I it's just it's just weird and like even if you have a good rapport with someone at a wedding as a speech it's like all right if nobody else gets the context, it's weird. Like, it's weird. Yeah. I shouldn't say an in-joke. Like, even if they had a bunch of inside jokes of like, ah, threesomes, don't say it at your speech. Like, their parents could be at the yeah, wedding. Yeah, It's just making on. everybody uncomfortable. Be considerate. She's into someone. She's into one of them. Yeah. Because that's like, that's not just like they got rid of the home. Like, I feel like there's something going right. on. Right, because if she was angry, it would give more of, like, jabs in the speech. Yeah, like, underhand seem... remarks. Yeah. But it's giving more like, oh, but we're all in love with each other, aren't we? But it also sounds like she's a bit of a mess. Yeah. she's getting drunk. Big mess. Like, like, all that stuff. Big I know mess. people get drunk at weddings, but it sounds like she's getting really drunk. Yeah. Um, God. Yeah. More like mess No update. Honor. Like, without an update, that it went fine. <clears throat> that everything went fine. The sister will always take care of it. Yeah, yeah. See, that's why I made my sister my maid of honor. Cause she was just on it. She was like, I'm your bitch for the day, whatever you need. I was like, great, that's I need a lot. Which one? And she just immediately punched Atlas. someone? She punched like six people. That's awesome. When I walked through the street, she was like, poof, poof, poof. That's great. I walked Hell through yeah. the street and forgot I was wearing my wedding dress and people were like, and I was like, what is going on? You were like, I was it's like, oh, me yeah. from Smosh. It's me, it's me from Smosh, okay? Don't They're worry like, about you're it. in a They're full like, wedding what? gown with a crown on. Um, all right, here's our next story. Yay. That's a good gosh. title. Today I fucked up by thinking my laser hair removal nurse was complimenting my asshole. <laughs> nurse? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nurse. There are nurses now? <laughs> okay. Obligatory, this happened a couple of days ago, but I've only just psychologically recovered from my utter embarrassment. So after lockdown ended in my country, there's been a huge sale at my local laser hair removal clinic, and so I thought, f*** it, might as well go for it. So I paid for my 10 visits and set off for the first one. A little nervous, but excited for my new hairless body. Now I decided it would be a great idea to get a full Brazilian, all the way from front to back. Pretty normal, right? The lovely nurse comes in and gives me a brief heads up, explains how it all sort of works. Uh, so she leaves the room, uh, leaving me to strip down. She comes back in and decides that we are going to laser away the hair around my asshole first. Ouch. All well and good, right? So the instructions I'm given are lay on your right side and use your left hand to pull up your bum cheek. So here I am, lying on my side, hand pulling up my bum while this lady sticks a laser around my asshole. <laughs> Now, on my left hand, I wear this gorgeous silver ring with a bright blue gem. It was handmade by my best friend's boyfriend, so it's pretty unique. So this lady saw my gorgeous ring and decided to break the awkward silence with, that's a cute ring you have there. And of course, I happened to forget I was wearing the damn ring. It just made uh, sense in my head that this nurse was complimenting the ring of my asshole. Yeah, I know. So still on my side, I tell her, thank you. It'll be a lot nicer when it's hairless, LOL. No! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Cue awkward laugh and then silence until I realized that she was not, in fact, talking about my bum. <laughs> Finished the rest of the appointment without speaking and dashed out of there as soon as possible, still recovering. She um, said, he, thank you. Um, thanks. Yeah, Wait, I have did, a good asshole. Why did the nurse <laughs> go, uh, I was. Oh, I was talking about your ring. That's hilarious. No, instead she just went. Oh. <laughs> and why is she a nurse? <laughs> Let her have her degree. I think I think for laser hair removal, maybe it's it's you have to be a, a medical. You got to be certified. You have to be like certified medical practitioner. Like wow. Certified. Um. Well, she was specific. She was like, "That's a cute ring." She I would never think what was my cute. asshole ring. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't ring. think that either. I, yeah. I, I don't know what I would think. Well, you're in a compromising position, you know? You are literally caught with your asshole out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why, I just don't know why people love to sit in that awkward silence. Why didn't any one of them say, you know, I thought you were 
talking about my asshole, but you're talking about my ring, and now we just have to sit here. Well, it's hard in you moments know, like that. I think what you have to also realize, and I've talked to people who are doctors and stuff about like how normal it becomes, like mundane it becomes. Like this, this woman looks at assholes all day. This is nothing to her. It's she wrong. does not care. It's it's really not actually that awkward. That's probably the not not the most awkward thing that's happened to her. Oh. People have probably farted in her face a lot. <gasps> What? <laughs> Tell me that hasn't happened. It's definitely there, happened. They have to pull their bum cheek up and you're expecting nothing to, to like, the more embarrassing things have happened. I don't, I think this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, someone said only nine more awkward visits to go. Uh, oh, someone, yeah. right. Cause that asshole ain't getting hairless you gotta right walk away. In, you gotta walk in and immediately just go, I thought you were talking about my, my butthole. <laughs> but you were talking about this ring. You were talking this about this ring. ring. Uh -huh. My She's brother's like, a girlfriend, boyfriend made it. It's very intricate. You'll be seeing a new specialist from here on out. Yeah. No uh, way. Someone else said, you and I are two very different people. Had that happened to me, I'd be coming on here to brag about the greatest joke I ever came up with. Mm -hmm. uh, this, someone else said, this made me laugh. Can just imagine the waves of embarrassment. In my last laser hair removal session, both me and the, and the lady had masks and those dark glasses, so any form of facial expression was completely hidden. At one point, she said, turn around, please, which sounds a lot like, laugh, please, in my language. So I proceeded to laugh awkwardly, thinking she wanted to test some sort of movement in my body while I laughed. <laughs> See, not the most embarrassing no. thing. I, I will be honest, I think I can relate to this, because if I was in this position, I, I wouldn't want to talk at all. I wouldn't want to talk. Like, I, I am so uncomfortable. Even like massages, like I'm just like, I'm dead silent. Like I don't want to, even and when they say something, I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I'm so uncomfortable. Is this okay? Yeah, it's okay. Is this okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yep. Um, I, I don't like I don't, talking in massages either just because of the like the re relaxation. Right, but yeah. I think if I were doing, if I, if I did any sort of laser hair removal or waxing in any sort of compromising place on my body, I would be like just, Let's just pretend we're robots. Next Some, video. Sometimes Shane. it's them, like who are the ones wanting to talk. So yes, I can see why they're she. They're used to it all day. They're right. Just do it all day. They don't care. Exactly. So I can see why she was like, as a as a little icebreaker, just being like, "Cute ring." How's your day? Yeah. Ooh, getting married, and you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> well, nice laser ring. my asshole. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Moving on. Wow. <laughs> Nothing else to say. Good cue. Here we go. Today I fucked up by complimenting a girl's skirt. <laughs> Happened a couple weeks ago. I was at a party and saw a girl across the room. She was wearing a skirt, holding a drink in one hand and had the other hand in her pocket. I saw her skirt, thought to myself how cool that skirt is having pockets. A lot of women I know complain about not having pockets. So this is a very progressive thing. <laughs> a bit later, I got around to talking to her. I complimented her skirt and how pockets in a skirt is great. She looked very confused, said, my skirt doesn't have pockets, why would you think that? I mentioned that I had seen her earlier with her hand in her pocket. Her face went bright red and revealed that her hand was amputated. What I thought was her hand in her pocket was her stump resting against her hip. I apologized immediately, but luckily she thought it was funny because she'd never heard that comment before. I'm still dying inside though. Um, <laughs> That did not oh. go where I thought it was going oh. to go. <laughs> How cool of her to be like, no, and then laugh. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> oh um, my God, she just. She sounds it was, awesome. It was just chilling. She sounds awesome. I, I could I could understand if if you're across the room and if it's even if it's like a party that's like maybe darkly lit or something you would you wouldn't know it's a. Well, I mean, I get it. Like, I'm just no, so confused how much thought he put into the skirt, skirt having a pocket and being like, he I wanted to talk to her. Yeah. yeah, it's very progressive that you have skirts, and not a lot of people have uh, pockets in skirts. And so, nice skirt. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. No, and I mean, but it, she laughed and it was funny. Yeah, she's I, cool. I think this guy was like, I. I he was flirting. I think he's flirting, and I think that's, and a, that's a fine way to flirt, to be like, Sweet. oh my god, your skirt has pockets. That's friggin' awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that is a good. That's a good way to start it. That's not like it's uncomfortable. Nice and, legs. And then, and see, it's great. <laughs> even, even the worst case scenario here is that it's not pockets. She doesn't have a hand. Uh, and yeah. he thought that she, you know, did, but it still worked out great. Right, she's he's not still, offended. He has the in here if he's if he's interested. She was she's, cool. She was totally cool. She sounds cool. dope. They have a very cute meet cute. Yeah, some, first comment was, but did you get those digits? 
Uh, s- s- oh. oh. Uh, no. No hand puns. Um, oh, God. No hand puns. Someone else said, ouch, but still, this is kind of wholesome. Uh, this is kind of a wholesome today. I f***ed up. At least you uh, gave her a laugh. Um, someone else said, moral of the story, don't ever assume women's clothing has evolved. <laughs> that's true. Fair. Um, it's. I think that's a wholesome story. I think yeah. it's. Such, I mean, that is like. I feel like that's a meet cute rom com. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That feels scripted. Yeah. It, it feels does. scripted. I, if I read that, I'd be like, "This is. Oh, that's a clever scene yeah. set up." I'm um, not mad, and she wasn't mad. She wasn't mad. No. He had good intentions. Also, that's like. It's, why would she be offended by that? He he truly thought like yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's. I I do think it's inappropriate to come up and immediately ask someone about like a situation that they have like that. You Where's know, like, your don't, hand? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But to be like, oh, like sweet. Oh, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. She probably laughed because she was probably like, wow, I never have heard that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's it's kind of endearing that he yeah. was just like genuinely. They're like, oh, hey, like cool. It's very sweet. Yeah. Um, love that love story. Love it. I hope they end up married. All right. So this is our last story, and this one is a Reddit legend. This is Ooh, this is an okay. older story. It's been around for years, but uh, we want to occasionally sprinkle in those those super super legendary Oldies. ones. Okay. So a lot of people watching have probably heard this story before. I don't know if you guys have heard it before or not. Um, so here we go. Today I fucked up by enraging the parents of my girlfriend by pretending not to know what a potato is. Let me tell you that I have made a bad mistake this evening. My girlfriend, who let me tell you is only my second girlfriend of all time, said I am invited to dinner with her and her parents. I was very aghast, nervous, and bashful to be invited to such a situation, but I knew it must be done. I met them nicely, I should tell you, and it started off in a good way. The idea slapped in my mind that I should do a comic bit to make a good impression and become known to them as a person who is amusing. When I saw that baked potatoes were served, I got the idea that it would be very good if I pretended I did not know what potatoes were. That'd be funny. Well, let me tell you, backfired on my face. I'll tell you how. So first when the potato came to my plate, I acted very interested. I showed an expression on my face so as to seem that I was confused, astounded, but in a restrained way, curious and interested. They did notice and seemed confused, but did not remark. So I asked, this looks very interesting. What is this? <laughs> they stared at me and the mother said, it's a baked potato. And I was saying, oh, interesting, baked, what is it again? And she was like, a potato. And I was like, a potato? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Never heard of a potato. Looks pretty good. And then they didn't see I was clowning, but thought I really did not know what a potato is. So I knew I'd be very shamed, humiliated, depressed, and disgusted if I admitted to making a bad joke. So what I did was to act as if it was not a joke, but I committed to the act of pretending I didn't know what a potato is. <laughs> they asked me, very incredulous, did I really not know what a potato is? That I never heard of a potato? I went with it and told them, yes, I did not ever even hear of a potato. <laughs> not only had I never eaten a potato, I had never heard the word potato. Oh my God. This went on for a bit and my girlfriend was acting very confused and embarrassed by my f***ed up antics. And then the more insistent I was about not knowing what a potato is was when uh, their parents uh, started thinking I did know what a potato was. Well, let me tell you, I had to commit 100% at this point. When I would not admit to knowing what a potato was, the father especially began to get annoyed. At one point, he said something like, enough is enough. You're f***ing with us. Admit it. And I said, sir, before today, I had never heard of a potato. I still don't know what a potato is other than some kind of food. I don't know what to tell you. Well, let me tell you, he got very annoyed. I decided to take a bite of the potato. And when I did, I made a high-pitched noise and said, Tastes very strange. <laughs> that is when the father started yelling at me. And the mother kept saying, what are you doing? And my girlfriend went to some other room. Finally, the father said I should get the f*** out of his house. And I said it was irrational to treat me like this just because I'd never heard of a potato before. Well, let me tell you, he didn't take that kindly. Now in text messages, I have been telling my girlfriend I really don't know what a potato is. The only way I can ever get out of this is for them to buy that I don't know what a potato is. 
I wish I'd never started it, but I can't go back. I think she'll break up with me anyway. <laughs> oh my God. I this love is this. A, this is a I think you should leave sketch. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know what it a potato actually is. It is. Tastes very it's strange. Tastes very strange. <laughs> Get the f out. Get the f The response is also like, because Get I the f out yeah. of my house. And then the girlfriend just goes to another room. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> Crying. <laughs> like, but I, I actually totally understand why he had to commit. Because oh, yeah. it was too, he couldn't at the end of the day be like, Yeah, I was just f with you. They would have been like, Great, go home. Yeah. He had to commit so hard and be like, wow, you're gonna throw me out because I don't know what a potato is? Like, yeah. I love this person. This I love is him such too. A stupid such story. a funny bit. I, like, my parents would have loved that bit if they were like, you yeah. don't know what a potato is? Oh, oh you're just well, joking. to be fair, also, this is something you would do. Oh, 100%. I feel like at some point, you would definitely do this be like, I don't know what a potato is. I've never heard of a potato. Inspired. Why didn't know. the parents just go, <laughs> okay. And just like let it and be. And then he would have been like, "You're right. I'm joking. Thanks for the laugh. Move on." <laughs> These parents suck. It's the parents. What's fault. the update? There's no update. Potatoes uh, will forever. So here's some known. comments. Invite your girlfriend to meet your parents. Have your father take her aside and ask if potatoes were served at the dinner with her parents. When she says yes, he looks alarmed, mutters something about wanting to keep them from him, and never mentions the subject again. <laughs> Wait, that's brilliant. That's so funny. Uh, when confronted about this horrible joke, insist it never happened with the same level of commitment. Maybe they will just think you have a brain disorder. No. Um, someone else said, send them a bouquet of potatoes as an apology. Uh, uh, now, this story has been widely considered uh, fake. Um, even if it's fake, it's an incredible sketch. I, I love this. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, it's, it doesn't feel fake to me, though. It's, it it, even if it's fake, I don't mind if things are fake if it's very silly and stupid. Yes. Where I care if it's fake is if they're saying something like very serious and intense. Yeah. And I'm yeah. Like, hey, don't don't make fake stories. Or about harmful. That. And it. Yeah, and I love is, that he's committing too till the end. I want to know where he is. You should know the popular "What's a Potato?" Reddit post story is 100% fake and lifted from the pilot of Andy Samberg's show Cuckoo. Oh, so this is a Andy Samberg sketch. Well, I love it. We're Wait, did this guy get in trouble? Yeah, um, yeah, watch the full episode for more context. The story is pretty much identical, except in the show, he isn't pretending, and goes on to sell baked potatoes from a street car. <laughs> it's such a sketch. It's too, it was too much of a sketch that it made sense. Wow. Now well, this Redditor is then, just so, so now this Redditor is an asshole for, for stealing a sketch. Well, it sounds like he committed again. Yet again, yeah. he has told us a lie. So he and is. And I only have respect. So he's the asshole, even though this isn't am I, I yeah. the asshole. Kimmy just brought up an interesting argument. What if, since this Andy Samberg sketch came out a year before this post, what if he watched that sketch, thought, oh, yeah, and then in this moment was like, he started to try to make that joke and oh. then just kind of committed to it and. Too hard and it didn't work out. So maybe work this out is well. real. So it still didn't Maybe happen. it's real because it was a sketch. Justice for this man. Yeah. Maybe. 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 Um, would you, if you got caught in a white lie like that, would you commit? Or yes. Would you? Absolutely. I would rather 100% commit and make them feel like they're stupid than, <laughs> than, what, than, than go back on my word and just be like, you're right, I f***ed up, and have them just be like, you're a monster. Yeah. Here's what you do. You keep lying. You add to the lies and you do 15,000 lies until your first lie makes somewhat sense. We don't even know who Arasha really is. Lie to the end. Uh, all right, well, this has been great. Thank you guys for joining. Thank uh, you for having thank us. Thank you, I, thank you. Thank you for being here for the first Reddit story that made me nearly cry. Oh my gosh. You did cry. I, 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 I would be fine with crying. It was really I, meaningful. I could, have, I could have cried. But yeah. you did. But I could have cried more. Oh, I could okay. have had I could have had tears. I I could have. Yeah. Because that story was the best story. It That's my favorite so story that we've read. The here. one with the asshole so and good. the ring. Yeah, that, I like that one. one. <laughs> um, well, thank you for joining me and thank you for watching. And next Saturday, um, you're gonna want to watch this episode. You're gonna want to watch it. That's all I'll say. You're gonna want to watch it. Just watch mm -hmm. it. Just watch it. We'll see Fine. You. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.